Welcome back, Giant Growers. It is Chris Brown, Garden of Giants YouTube channel. Patch update number seven. July 18th, the summer is starting to uh, kick into full gear. We're, we're past halfway through July. For most of you, I think pumpkins are starting to pick up pace. Um, remember that 30 to 50 day that's your that's really your peak growth time and most of mine are are hitting that 30 day right around that 30 day mark um and obviously last patch update you guys had um was not a very pretty one it was good bad and ugly well there's there's some consequences to the bad and the ugly that i will show you on this patch tour so let's uh let's get started the one we are looking at that is glowing bright and orange is uh the ruby plant the 41 or the 1461 rotabaugh um beautiful pumpkin and growing growing well but i don't know if you can see this this front part here is just absolutely massive um I don't know if you can see from the side there but that uh I, I have a feeling at some point this is gonna try to sneak down and cover up that that blossom end um but a really nice pumpkin really oh numbers let's see uh i think it's right up near 31 days old and about 200 maybe 230 pounds something like that so nothing insane but it'll be a beautiful orange pumpkin and remember i had some issues with some secondaries and especially on this side um and then i had that other pumpkin that i that i had called off so this one had to catch up anyways but it's doing really good plants okay um not the biggest and obviously you can see some grass has gotten in there which i haven't even bothered weeding the main part of the plant i don't know if you can see down there is still pretty well weeded but uh that is ruby ruby's offspring so we'll see how that one does let's head over to the 1109 jutris all right, the 1109 Jutris, my greenie, my one and only greenie I'm growing for competition, uh, has a, a, a bit of a weird shape to it, as you can see, but um, I don't think that'll, at the end of the day, be that big of a deal. In fact, it might add some strength on these walls to keep that, that hump going. So um, its numbers aren't, aren't really too impressive. I think it's up around day 20, uh, 20, three and i think it's about 200 pounds so nothing nothing to write home about now this is growing this one's growing on a secondary my main just had a weird shape to it and the secondary is is um if we can let's jump up here so the main vine comes along here and goes out to there the secondary comes along here and this is where i put this one in um so you know it is what it is as long as it stays green and and we just keep growing that there's a lot of season left so that's my hope there um i i don't know i may i may do a backup on the main vine but that main vine is probably 35 feet out now, so I really don't want to mess with it. And I have something decent here, so I'm probably not going to do it. But I keep thinking to myself I should. But um, anyways, nice, beautiful greenie. Let's, uh, let's go over to the star of the patch. All right, this is definitely the star of the patch, the 2365 Wolf. Uh, doing absolutely phenomenal. I think it's uh, still, I want to say day 35, and it's around 560 pounds. Um, so just, it, it's growing. I mean, so all my pumpkins slowed down not too long ago, um, about four days ago. We got down into the low 40s for a couple days. 
I had some nice 40, 45 pound a day growth. And then that hit and this one actually, um, the day after that 41 or 46, 45 degree day, it only grew about 11 pounds that day according to the tape. Um, so it just almost brought it to a stop. Um, but last night it picked back up, it's about 38. Um, so I think it's slowly, and last night wasn't the nicest either, it was about 56 degrees. So we need to really get some heat to get these things going again. Um, decent plant goes really, really far both ways. It's just not long. I'm probably only about maybe 20 feet out. So I'm probably 35 by 20. Um, the secondaries are doing decent that are coming off. Um, not the best. I wish they could do more, but obviously I think what's happening is all the energy is being focused into this pumpkin, obviously. Um, so I may let them go. I may just cut them and call it good and try to do what I can with what plant I got um, versus trying to stretch secondaries out. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm still debating on that one. But nonetheless, a very nice pumpkin. I was quite disappointed. I came out and there was some, there was no bug there, but obviously this is a bug bite. doesn't look good, but it's really hard. So there's... There doesn't seem to be any rot there, but I am going to watch this like a hawk because if anything starts to get soft, I'm going to immediately clean it and fungicide it. But like I said, as of right now, that is, it is fine. So I'm hoping it's just a superficial um, skin wound that a bug obviously did. Um, as we look around this pumpkin, and it is just massive. Um, we'll go to the the stem end. The vines still have plenty of leeway, so I don't. I already pulled this pumpkin once. As we look here, everything around that stem looks just fine, so I don't see any issues there. Some nice orange color, so I'm hoping this orange is up once it. Once it gets more mature, it's still very, very soft skin, which is good. All right, that is the 2365, the absolute beautiful, huge pumpkin, the star of the patch. Let me show you a couple of the uh, results of the bad and the ugly. All right, real quick, my Gunstrom, it, it aborted its pumpkin and I found some cucumber beetles on it and I did a spray but I think it might have been too late I started to see some funky stuff on the tips and I got just too nervous the leaves are starting to get yellow I just pulled it I didn't want anything to obviously spread to any other plant so that and and because that big that 130 pounder aborted on me it, it just to start another one this late in the game wasn't worth it so i pulled it i got rid of it and then i don't know if you guys remember the the foaming stump u-turn plant but i decided that wasn't worth my time or effort so i took that out I am kind of running a little experiment. Um, I don't think it'll do much, but this pumpkin is still growing and it's on, you know, about a six, seven foot vine, buried and rooted from there. It's rooted all the way to there, um, but it is still growing, not much, but it is still growing every day, which is crazy. It has just a beautiful shape. I really wish I could have, had that 1552 young go that definitely hurts my chances of an hd this year because that i think would have been about as a guarantee as an hd as you can get so everybody that is uh bringing a pretty pumpkin this year you're welcome ha, just kidding um all right so those were the two this was my this was my ugly the other one was my bad um Let's go over, let's peek at the stelts. I'm having some issues with that plant. All right, here's the 2069 stelts. I'm not really having issues per se with the plant. 
um, although it has gotten real light green or lighter green I feel like and it was next to the Gunstrom so I'm a little nervous I'm gonna really watch this the next few days um, this pumpkin has essentially stopped growing and because it's getting still really solid but see how it's really oranging up nicely I mean just beautiful but I have a feeling that it's throwing it to a maturity so I have started two backup pumpkins on this plant but we're really going to watch this plant um, very closely if I start to see anything that slightly resembles a disease this thing's going to go away in a hurry um, but as of right now I'm hoping um, that this stopped because of some stress issue that I can't figure out why um, it has not aborted it has not rotted there's no nothing on there that says it is rotting um, as you can see everything around there looks good in fact when I say stop it's still it's just really weird it's putting on like just a couple inches a day and it's in its about day 30 it just it, it shouldn't be this slow so I don't know I don't know what exactly is going on but the stump area looks really well so I'm just gonna I'm just going to say that some stressor caused this pumpkin to stop growing it's about 160 pounds 170 but we'll we'll see what the new ones do I got one on that end and one over right on that end so we'll see what happens with those two I may grow both of them since it's too late to to do a competition grow one on each side of the plant see how big I can get it all right that's the pumpkins as you can see that one's sticking up the best Let's get my hand out of there. That one, the Ruby, and the Jutras way over there. All right, let's uh, let's head over to some some smaller some smaller giants. Um, this is the uh, 345 Gunstrom, the uh, uh, Bushel Gourd, and we actually did a cross the other day. I'll I'll put up a video on how how we do our crosses. But we did a cross with the world record, the uh, uh, 470 Conley. So we crossed that into there. Um, I'm excited about that. I think uh, the Conley has kind of a little ridge or a little nose on its on its uh, fruit, and the 345 Gunstrom is is um, in my lineage path. Uh, the 331 I grew where it's more it's just round you don't have any sort of protrusion so I really wanted to mix those two varieties and here is here's the 470 Conley and actually let's uh, let's go down here I pollinated two on the exact same day now I'm excited about that because what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to really gauge them I'll see which one is is taking the lead pulling off uh, more more pounds more inches a day and then I'll go with that one um, as you can see what I'm talking about this little this little uh, nose that it has the gunstrom is going to be round this will have a little nose or snout on the end of it and I want to uh, I want to make sure that that I cross them to see if I can't get the advantage maybe the advantages of both lineages together um, I know this one goes a little heavy that one goes a little on the big side so if I can get big and heavy um, you know maybe maybe we can make something cool or maybe it'll be nothing nothing big and obviously this the, the pollinations aren't going to affect except for the seeds for next year so when i pull the seeds out of these the i'll be able to see what happened with the genetics if i grow a plant out next year and that is that's what i 
plan to do. I'm going to you know, always take these blossoms off after after they pollinate. You don't want anything rotting. And a couple nice little gourds though. Really, really happy with these. Um, and then now let's uh, let's jump over to the tomatoes. Tomato alley here. I think I have decided I'm going to put up a uh, weed fabric because as fast as I weed these things, they just they are the, the weeds grow right back. It's mainly grass. So I'm just gonna put weed fabric over them. But we got an, um, several nice megas, probably too many to talk about, but this one right here, the 525 green, just incredible. I don't know if you guys can even see that, but not only is it just swelling up like mad, but it is on a stem that is, it's it's really honestly as impressive as my 906. So I'm I'm excited about that. It is a different variety. My 906 was a Domingo. This is a Big Zach. So we'll see. We'll see what uh, what it does. Big Zachs I feel are usually a little more dense. Um, so if we can get the same numbers as my uh, Domingo, I think we could have a even bigger fruit potentially. Uh, but as we go along here, I have on almost every plant, I have um, megas going. In fact, let's see. There's a nice one there. This is on my 906. Let's we'll see how that ends up. On the Tobek here, we got, I think we got a nice one. There it is. Nice one, nice big double there. Um, there's actually another one on there I'm watching too, just to see. Um, the bees always pollinating. I tell you, I got so many bees at this place. There's just bees everywhere. So I don't know if I truly ever have to even pollinate these tomatoes because I just get a horde of bees out every morning, real early like 5 6 a.m. and they're just they're just out here just going to town which is which is nice because sometimes tomatoes can be a pain they can be a pain to to pollinate um but i let's see i don't know where all my other megas are there i got at least one in in about every every plant here i think here's one i got two i'm debating um this is the uh, 6.21 gross this uh that's a very nice one there but that one right there may win it uh, that's a that's a massive fruit with a, with a very nice stem so and actually there's another one right above it so this plant i'm gonna have to do some decision making i got one two three four megas on one plant oh wait <laughs> Five megas. Where is it here? Right there. Five megas on one plant. Oh boy, I gotta, I gotta make some decisions on this one, so I can send the energy all to one. Um, but that's about it. Um, uh, we do have giant cantaloupe. I'm gonna grow this out a little bit more before I, before I set something on it. Um, I'm gonna try to time it just right for an October way off, but that may may be difficult. Here's my gopher issue. I'm literally about to go caddyshack on it. I, I bought some um, smoke bombs, so I think we're just gonna bomb this thing. I may do a video on it and show that later, um, but that thing is driving me absolutely crazy. And then we got the butternut squash, we got the two field pumpkins, and the world record marrow. Um, they are all doing good. I wish this one was a little bigger, but these guys are right where I want them. Um, I'm going to go for an August 1st, or at least first week in August pollination. And that should, that should be just about perfect. And then last but not least in this one, Sunflower Alley here. Um, thanks to the gopher, I've lost four sunflowers. This one's probably next if I can't catch them. But I think I still have two, four, six, eight, nine. 
nine really nice sunflowers getting big so we'll see what they turn into and then uh and then we're let's go over to the the back patch here way too hot here to grow cabbage but i'm trying it we'll see we'll see what it turns into just doing it in a grow bag nothing special we'll see all right here's some carrots i got growing under the bush what's under the bush oh look at that carrot that one looks pretty crazy let's see what else we got oh, we got this one right back here that one looks pretty crazy I wonder what size they are well here's my hand give you an idea i mean they're a decent size pretty pretty decent sized carrots we'll see we'll see what they turn into excited about them all right welcome back it's back patch and start with the 1454.5 angle this is going to be my 150 square foot plant looks like i need to give it a drink it's getting a little warm out um it'll be roughly in this area here i need to move this tank i'm not quite to the 150 yet so i'll probably get that up this week take a picture got a real late start on it really honestly not expecting anything great on this one but i'm hoping for a nice orange pumpkin especially now that i don't have the 1552 so i'm going to pollinate my first one right over here and that will be i'm really considering the cross with the 2365 since that pumpkin is doing so such good good growth and is so beautiful um real pretty orange i think it's gonna be so um that's the 150 here's my genetics project got two plants going um this will probably be the first one i pollinate and that is going to be the this is the blue moon times squash cross um it was crossed with a 675 maiden i believe and that one so this is the first generation this one i'm going to cross with my 1109 so Hopefully, we get some cool, cool crosses there for genetics for next year. And then, this is the trellis that I got built. Um, like I said, nothing too fancy, just functional. Um, goes up 14 feet. And this first long gourd is a 131 Tobek. Second long gourd is a 173.75 Eaton. And the third long gourd is a 154.6 G Feller. Um, the US record, the world record, and the one that grows a couple US records. So nice. Um, menagerie of some of the best genetics on earth i believe so hopefully we can get something they're a little behind where i'd like them to be and that's because we have had just we had a little bit of really hot weather and then we've had some really cold weather and it looks like next week we're going back um to very hot weather in fact i believe i just seen a 98 or 100 forecasted for next week which um we see about one 100 degree day about every 10 years here so once every 10 years so if it really gets up near there that will be crazy um and then these are all my super hot peppers no, nothing giant about them um just a bunch of different reapers and dragon's breath um Maybe going to do some crossing. We'll see how the season progresses. I, I There's a Pepper X I'm trying. We'll see if that really turns into anything or if it's just a joke. I have a story behind it, but we can get into that later, maybe this winter. Um, and then really, really far over there, you can see that is a the second largest marrow ever growing on Earth. The 235 bags, I believe it is. And 
that one I'm going to do as a genetic project crossing with the world record which I have growing in the other patch so this is the back patch um, nothing too impressive or extraordinary yet but we're getting there it's all coming together a lot of summer left to watch everything grow like I said just in the middle of July here so um, thanks so much guys if you like the video hit like if you want to see more of these hit subscribe um, and come along with me for the journey we'll do lots of how-to videos so stay tuned for those otherwise have a great week and a great summer and grow them big